in this video, we will cover the SAT March study routine for 2023 because I want you to make sure that you guys can get the 1600 that you so desperately want. I mean, I think desperately. But before we even talk about that, I would like to thank today's sponsor, GothMath. GothMath is a math resource tool that uses state-of-the-art AI technology to solve math questions using your smartphone camera. And one of the best things about this tool is that it is completely free, so you can keep asking to solve all your ST math questions. This tool can be also used to answer questions in multitude of math fields, such as graphs, calculus, geometry, and more. And it provides step-by-step -step solutions on how to do these problems, so you can actually understand how to get from point A to point B. And if you use my code in the description below, you can get Goth Plus, which only costs $7.99 a month with my code description below. And that way you can get access to a live tutor who can further show you how to do these math problems using a digital whiteboard. So if you want access to a live tutor, use my code in the description below. Or if you just want to be able to use the AI state of art technology yourself without even using a live tutor, then just download the app and check it out today. And if you want further details on how to do this, the code, be sure to check the link in my description below and start improving your SAT math score today with Goth Math. Like AI is just so cool nowadays, right? Like, wow. All right, guys, so now it's time to talk about the SAT March study routine because I know you guys are probably like, oh my God, SAT is only like a month and a half away. How can I you know, really improve my score a lot? Well, the first tip is to set a goal for yourself. Guys, write your goals down, okay? Write it on a piece of paper, write it on like a napkin, write it on your, your own whiteboard. I know Gothmath has a digital whiteboard. You can use your actual whiteboard in your room. Write your goals down and look at them, read them every day, or at least think about them. Because by setting goals down and like writing them down, you can actively like train your brain to constantly think about these goals or find new ways to get to these goals, right? To accomplish them. So if you set a goal for yourself, let's say for SAT, you're like, I wanna get a 1400 on the March SAT. Your brain will start thinking of ways of, of you know getting to that point, be like, okay, this is what I need to do to make sure I can accomplish this goal. And sometimes you might write your goal down, but literally forget about it and be like, oh shoot, I forgot. I'm trying to get a 1400, not a 1300. If you write it down right, and you rehearse it, then you're constantly gonna be reminded of your goal, which like I said, will trick your brain into like finding ways to accomplish that goal. And you're just gonna have a higher chance of you know, getting your goal. And a good thing to do is once you set a goal for yourself and you write it down, you wanna determine how much time you have before the test, because let's say you watch this video two weeks from now, then you obviously have two weeks less worth of time to study for the March SAT. Determine your time schedule, how much time you have, and then make a schedule around it so you can actually accomplish your goal and make steps to accomplish that goal. Now, my second tip is to create a dedicated study space. Now, I know the SAT is obviously like a worldwide test, really, aside like Antarctica, I'm pretty sure everyone takes it. But the thing is, people live in different situations, right? Some people might have like 10 siblings while another person might be an only child. Depending on your situation, you might have a noisy work environment slash study environment. Now guys, I don't know about you, but if I'm in a noisy study environment, it can get kind of hard to focus and actually, you know, learn things. So you want to make sure that when you are, you know, studying or working that your environment that you're working in is, is pretty serene, it's pretty quiet, and you can actually focus because if you can't, then yes, you might be doing the math problems or doing the reading problems, but you're not going to be actually retaining the information because maybe your little brother starts running around like the, the the living room and like yelling at you or throwing things at you. And you're just like, bro, what did I even just do on this worksheet? I can't, I can't focus, can't remember anything. And that would just be a great waste of time. Personally, if you don't have a pretty quiet or, you know, work friendly environment in your house, then just go to the, your local library. Usually obviously the workspaces are free and it's quiet because it's a library. You can actually study and focus or you go to a WeWork, which obviously costs some money, but it is another good place to uh, study, focus, and get your work done. Personally, I would recommend a library just because it's free and it's like pretty easy to do. Usually anywhere someone lives, there's a local library that you can just go there and work and like relax and chill. So you should do that, right? Study there for three, four hours and then you can always go back home and you know, do whatever. My next tip is to vary up your study activity. You see, doing the same thing over and over again when you're studying, personally, I'm not that against it. I feel like boring old habits can lead to great success, but if you're getting bored of your study routine and you're feeling like things are so monotonous and you're not excited, well, you're probably not excited to study regardless. But if you're not, like if you're dreading the fact that, oh my God, I have to study, I have to do this and this and this every single day, then change things up. Create some variety in your, your study schedule. Like let's say you always, you know, do sample questions at the start of your study session. Maybe next time you want to, you know, have some flashcards. Have some flashcards that help you review concepts and do those at the start of your session instead of the end of your session. Or maybe you're not someone who 
uses flashcards. Like personally, I never use flashcards, but now I might just add some flashcards to mix up my study routine and keep things fresh. Another key benefit of varying up your study routine and you know, sometimes studying through flashcards, uh, doing sample questions, practice tests. It's like basketball where you're practicing your different shots around the court. Like by doing these different shots, you're preparing your overall self and making yourself a better player. In this case, a better test taker. You're always ready, you're being versatile and that is needed on the SAT. Now, the next tip is something that a lot of people don't do as well. And that's to take breaks and reward yourself, all right? Now, I know you're not a dog, okay? I don't know if you guys know about like the famous psychological studies, but something called positive reinforcement is a very powerful concept where if you do something good, right? And you get a reward or some type of benefit out of it, you're gonna be more inclined to do that same good or that same like action again. So let's say you take a practice test, a full length SD practice test. And at the end of it, you reward yourself by buying yourself a new pair of shoes, right? Now you'd be like, wow, like by taking this practice test, I was able to reward myself by buying a new pair of shoes. Now I'm excited or at least more likely to take another practice test again and reward myself again afterwards because you know i did this time it felt great i'm gonna keep doing this again and again and by doing this yes you are rewarding yourself and maybe by spending some money you can always just get some chocolate something cheap but you're also you know tricking your brain and making yourself take multiple practice tests which is overall going to help your sat score and guys taking breaks is important as well and that's why i do stress to have a good study location have study environment because when you're in a good study environment even when you take a break, you're still in focus, right? It's not like you take a break and all of a sudden there's noise everywhere and you're completely distracted and you can't really get back to that flow state you're initially in. What you should do is be in a good study space, right? Take a break after let's say 45 minutes of studying, a 15, 20 minute break. I know you guys are probably familiar with the Pomodoro technique. You know, just practice this where yes, you are doing work for a long period of time, but you're also taking a break you're recuperating, retaining the information that you just read, and then you're getting back to work later on. By repeating this cycle of taking breaks, you know, studying, taking more breaks, studying, and at the end, rewarding yourself, you're gonna be, you know, following a good habit and overall good study schedule, and you're gonna probably be studying a lot more than you think you probably would have earlier had you not, you know, watched this video or followed these tips. So be sure to follow this study routine because I guarantee you guys, it's gonna help you a lot when it comes to SAT March. And it's going to honestly probably help you on any exam, right? So be sure to follow these tips. If you guys like the video, please share in the comments, share, subscribe. Peace.